Good morning, good morning. This is a day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad therein. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Amen. We give God all the glory and all the praise. Uh, welcome to Reginald Dalton's Ministries, uh, our very first broadcast. We are looking forward to uh, many, many more. We thank God. We want you to uh, share this, invite some other folk on to come on, hang out with us. Amen. So that we can uh, move forward and do the things we need to do. God's people need to hear God's word. And I am here and I'm excited to be able to bring it to you this morning. We will give people an opportunity to continue to log on. Um, go ahead and type in the chat. Good morning. Good morning. Sister Butler, Sister Cole, Sister Williams. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It is wonderful to see you all. Amen. Amen. It's very, very good to see you. Come on, tag, share it. Let folk know we're here and that we are excited about what God. Good morning, Sister Jordan. Man, God is a great God. Amen. And we are excited about what God is doing in the life of his people. Amen. We are excited about where God has us and has us and where God has taken us and what God is doing in our life. Amen. So we want you to uh, get ready. Let's have a great time, great worship this morning uh, to uh, teach and preach uh, God's word. Uh, set your clocks for um, uh, on Tuesday. We're going to be back again on Tuesday doing our thing as far as um, doing what we do when it comes to uh, doing um Bible study. Amen. You can go to Reginald Belton's ministries. There is a Bible study page that we have created for you. It's called uh, Transformational Tuesday or Transform Transformational Tuesday or T3. And we're going to be teaching God's word there on Tuesday at seven. Um, I am excited about those who are joining us. Thank you so much. Keep coming. Um, and I want you to invite others to be a part of this broadcast. Amen. Be a part of this broadcast and we pray that it's going to be a blessing to you. Amen. To God be the glory for the great things that he is doing. Good morning, uh, Dick and Dalton, Sister Green, Sister Dalton, Sister Bolden, Sister Jordan, and all those who are continuing to jump on and join us this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. While we're still waiting for others to come, before we go into prayer, go ahead and grab your Bibles, your electronic devices, um, and uh, so you can go ahead and find Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3, we're talking about a date with destiny, amen, a date with destiny, uh, and we're praying that it's going to be a blessing to you. It was a blessing to me, blessing for me to spend my time, amen, um, studying and preparing for this message, um, so we're praying that God will bless it in a super way. Amen. Go ahead and tag some friends, tag some folk, tell them to jump on while we are doing what we do. Amen. To God be the glory for the great things that he is doing. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. We'll give it about another minute and we're going to pray and then we'll be begin our teaching uh, for this morning. Amen. We hope that this is only the first of many uh, broadcasts that we will be bringing to you uh, each and every day as we bring God's word to your house. Amen. Uh, we thank God that we're going to be able to teach, train, and transform. That is highly, highly important. If you are excited about it, go ahead and hit your like button, your heart button. Amen. Let me know you're there. Type some comments in there. Uh, again, share it. Do a watch party with someone um, so that we can do the things we need to do. Let us go to uh, the Lord in prayer, and then we will move forward with our 
teaching in this worship, this virtual space. Thank you for those who are joining us virtually. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this opportunity and time that we're going to have with you, God, that we're going to be able to spend in your word, God, quality time, God. God, I pray that you will uh, bind up the hand of the enemy, God, and release power and conviction and preaching knowledge in this place. God, keep us focused. Hold us together, God. It's only you that we can do this by the power and empowerment of your Holy Spirit. I pray for those who are joining us, God, far and near. God, I pray that this word that we're going to teach this morning will be a blessing to them. But God, I pray that you will help us improve our broadcast so that we can reach even further beyond our doors. We thank you. We glorify you, God. We love you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, here we go. Listen, um, go to Joshua chapter 3, amen? Joshua chapter 3, it says, early in the morning, uh, Joshua, uh, Joshua and all the Israelites set out to Shittim, from Shittim, and went to the Jordan where they, they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priest carrying it, you are to move out from your position and follow it. Follow it. Move out from your position and follow it. Then you will know which way to go since you've never been this way before. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the Ark. Do not go near it. And then Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priest, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel, so they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priest who carries the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan water, go and stand in the river. It says God's word for God's people. I want to talk and speak to you as you see the subject scrolling across your screen. A date with destiny. A date with destiny. Whenever you travel or we've been traveling, uh, my family and I, we went to see our son, my son in Alaska, who's serving our country and we thank God for his service. We set out, we did not just pick up one morning and say, we're going to Alaska. Uh, We took time to set up and set up our travel plans. Uh, It went from the date that we wanted to leave to the date we wanted to arrive and how long we wanted to stay, what we wanted to do while we were there um, and how much fun it was going to be. We took an account for traveling. We had to travel safe. We had to make sure we were vaccinated. We had to isolate ourselves to ensure that we did not uh, contact COVID, those things, um, and, and, and put, you know, make sure we were ready to go. So, so we, we, we traveled, we took our time and set up travel plans so that we can get where we needed to get and go where we needed to go and do the things we needed to do. Uh, whenever one travel, whenever you travel or plan to travel, there are three things you and I and everyone must do, three steps we must take to reach our destiny. And I believe that uh, in the process of how we proceed during the process and what we do during the process has an effect upon our course of our travel, which in turn uh, affects our destiny. Uh, Listen to me very closely. Each of us, God has a destiny for us to uh, reach. God has a place that he wants us to go. God has a place that he needs us to be. And we all have to reach that destiny. But what we do in the process, in the preparation to reach our destiny will also affect 
how quickly we get there, what we have to go through to get there, or if we get there at all. If I'm helping you, somebody need to help me type that in and let me know that I'm helping you this morning. Amen. So, so from, from this day forward, we must, um, must ask and be willing to, to be asked when, where, and how we will reach our destiny. Can I pause it just for a minute? Um, I was talking to a good friend of mine and he said, you know, God will, Pastor Tim Kent, a good friend of mine in Columbia, he said, God will tell you what to do, but sometimes God never tells you how, when, or where he's going to do it. And we have to be willing to just follow instructions, put together our itinerary and make it work. Amen. So, so, so here, here it is. We must have an itinerary, a plan. We must follow the instructions. That's the process. And then we must implement. That is to proceed. You have to go forward. Follow me. I said, you must have a plan. You just don't up and jump up and do stuff haphazardly um, without a plan because you will miss out on something that is vitally important for you to have along your journey. I want to let you understand and know that in Jeremiah says, the Lord says, I know the thoughts and the plans I have for you. Uh, Plans uh, and thoughts I have before you, not to hurt you, but to prosper you and to bring you to an expected end. In other words, you and I have an expected end. So our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. We dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean upon Jesus' name, upon Christ, the solid rock we stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not upon your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I, 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 want to, I want to talk to you and teach to you today um, about, listen, we all have a date with destiny. And there are many times we've been spending so much time uh, bumping around doing things that we think we're supposed to be doing that's supposed to get us where we need to go. And we have missed out on our destiny or been delayed getting to our destiny. Can I tell you something about uh, this destiny that the children of Israel were on. They, it was supposed to be an 11 day journey from Egypt to the promised land, which turned out to be a 40 year expedition. Why? Because they did not follow the instructions. They did not implement what God told them to implement. They did not plan. The moment Moses took them out of Egypt, it was not far before they began to to, to murmur and complain and, and, and want to go back to what they just left. Is anybody here tired of being where you are and you do not want to go back to where you just left because you know it's better where you're going than where you are? Listen, let me help you with something. You have a destiny in your life. God has a uh, favor on your life. God has a place for you to go. God wants you to be where he needs you to be, but you can't get there if you don't follow through with what God has told you to follow through. I'm getting to point one in just a moment. I just want to take a few minutes just to teach and preach and get my legs under me the way I want to it and feel God talking and speaking through me to you because I'm trying to speak a word of life into you today that you need to understand you all have a date with destiny. Don't let people talk you out of your day. Don't let people detract and distract and destroy and hold you up from reaching that which God wants you to reach. Because as long as you are miserable along with them, they are happy. But the moment you try to move forward and do some great things that God wants you to do, then that's when your haters show up. That's when people show up and begin to fight. That's when they show up and try to get with you. I preached a few weeks ago 
from this subject uh, uh, out of Ezra. I said, you have to uh, stay focused because you have people that will try to flatter you along the way. And if they can't get you with flattery, then they fight you with falsehoods. And then they uh, try to bribe other people to come against you. But let me tell you something. Keep your eyes on the prize. Do not allow that stuff to deter you or stop you from where you're going. You have a date with destiny. So let's look at this thing. The first thing Joshua told them, he says, listen, we picked the story up. Moses is dead now. Uh, he led the children of Israel as far as he could lead them. God took him and put Joshua there, uh, told Joshua to be strong, be encouraged. Don't be afraid of their faces because I am with you. And, and Joshua and Joshua was leading the people. He, he was taking the people where he needed to take them. Rahab the harlot had made a covenant with the spies prior to this in chapter two. He says, the Lord uh, spoke to Joshua and told him to prepare the people for in three days, they will cross over into the land he had promised. I, I hope I'm helping somebody uh, this morning. Uh, listen, so you have to stay focused. Uh, don't get caught up on the outside stuff. Don't let your mind, your eye, your, your, your spirit, your drive, your energy be wasted on things that don't add anything to your destiny. Amen. So watch this now. He, he says, listen, in the text, and I want to point out to you uh, three important steps that are paramount to our success. Three important steps that are paramount to our success. I wish I had somebody to help me talk this morning. The first thing is you've got to have an itinerary. That's a plan, a, a line of travel, a route. That's what it means. You, you got to understand that you just don't pick up and move. Any people and anybody who picks up and just grab their stuff and move, they are not listening. They are in haste. And here's the thing. You cannot have anxiety when you are waiting on God to tell you to do something. Your anxiety must remain at a minimum. Can you imagine uh, Noah? Uh, you read the text in uh, 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 about Noah. Uh, the Lord put Noah in the ark, and we thought that the rain came ex immediately as soon as the Lord closed the doors. But if you read that text correctly, it said, and the Lord told him to wait seven days, the rain will come. It is in those times when we're on our way to our destiny that our faith really has to kick in. Because you say, God, he did not show up. Is he going to really come do this? Is there are seven days? How am I looking? People think I'm crazy. It looked like I'm foolish. God, did you not show up when you were supposed to show? God, am I supposed to stay here? God, do I really, uh, am I really hearing from you? Did you really tell me to step out and do this? God, I'm looking bad. But here is when your faith really kicks in. It's in between the time that God tells you to do something and the actual time God tells you to go do it. You got to deal with that in between time. This is the time that you spend praying. This is the time. That in between time is the time you spend praying, reading your word, uh, fasting, uh, uh, listening to the Lord, getting away from distractions, getting some of the white noise out of your life, pulling away from relationships and people who have not uh, prospered you anything, changing your attitude toward how you feel about God. This is the time, that in-between time. This is the preparation time for you to get to your destiny. Is when God tells you to do something, then you have to begin to prepare. Let me help you with something. God is always faithful to do his part. We got to do our part. So you sit, you plan, you put your itinerary together. He says, listen, three days, Joshua, we're going to go and get, let's read it. Let's look at it. He says, he says, after three days, he said, after three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. And, and this is what the Lord told Joshua in chapter five. Now I'm going to try to help you. I'm going to bounce back and forth, but it will make sense to you. He said, Joshua told the people to consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. 
the Lord will do an amazing thing for you. That is one of the biggest problems we have in our churches today. People don't consecrate themselves. People don't come to church ready to do church. People don't come in the presence of God ready to worship and praise the Lord. They consecrate yourself, Joshua told them. Yeah, you, you, you see it? He said, consecrate yourselves for to, tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things to amazing things among you. Not only will he do amazing things, he's going to do amazing things among you. So the first point is we got to always have a plan. Uh, God gives us all an itinerary or plan for our lives. And I want to encourage you, each of you here this morning, God has a plan for you and he has in your life and he has set a date for you to reach your destiny. Do you follow me? God has a plan for you and God has time for you when, for time that you're supposed to reach your destiny. Can, can I help somebody? Stop. Don't rush it. Don't get ahead of God. Let God do what he does and let God guide you. I know I'm, 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 I'm in the same boat you're in because sometimes you say, God, you just ain't moving fast enough. You just don't seem to be coming along like you're supposed to. God, this thing is getting deep. This thing has gotten deep. Things are not looking like we want them to look. And here it is. God is saying this. Listen, wait, just be. Don't let your anxiety get all over you. Don't get excited. Don't get anxious. Don't be fearful. If God said it, he is going to come through and make it happen. But here is the thing. Are you ready? Have you prepared yourself? How and have you laid out your plans? Have you made this date with destiny that you have? Are you ready to go and achieve that? Are you ready to have that? Are you ready to reach that? Are you ready to go through what it's going to take for you to go through to get what you need to get and get what God wants you to be? Are you ready for that? That that is the key. Have you done the work? Have you laid out the plan? Have you put this thing before God? Have you spent time with Him, asking Him what you should and should not do? That is the key. If you're going to reach your destiny, and those who have joined me online, if you're going to reach your destiny, if we're going to reach your destiny, if I'm going to reach my destiny, we all must, must, must. Spend time in the presence of God, not talking, just listening, not giving out instructions, but receiving instructions, not trying to dictate, but allowing God to maneuver us where he wants us to go, not trying to tell God what you want, but listen to what God is telling you you need, not trying to tell God what route you need to take, but let God guide you along the route. If I'm helping somebody, go ahead and hit your heart button, your, your, your like button, go ahead and give me a comment. Let God God lead you where you need to be. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. Listen to this now. It says, so we got to have a plan. Got to have an itinerary. It says a man makes plans in his own heart, but it's God who directs his steps and guide him through what he needs to have. This is key to you reaching your destiny. How many of us and how many people you know? Hmm? have missed out. You know, I've heard, I heard they say some of the greatest ideas in the world, some of the greatest inventions in the world, some of the greatest people in the world uh, all missed out on their destiny. They're in the cemetery. They died and never reached their destiny because they did not have a plan or they allowed someone to talk them out of where God was trying to take them. Is it, do, do I have any witnesses in the room? Do I have any company here with me uh, this morning? So, so, so God is trying to help us get where we need to be. So the first thing, you got to have an itinerary. You got to have a plan. Next thing, you got you to gotta listen to the instructions. You got to listen to the instructions, hear the instructions. Uh, uh, you know, this is the process. The instructions are is the process. It says process means usual order or direction, giving orders to the people. Watch this. He says, 
when the ark, when you see the ark, this is what he says. Listen to what Joshua says. It says, when you see the ark, this is in verse three. It says, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priest carrying it, you are to move out from your position and follow. Then you will know which way to go since you've never been this way before. See, the destiny that you, you're going on, you've never been there. So you don't know where you're going. So you got to trust in the Lord. He says, when you see the ark, in other words, when the presence of God began to guide you and lead you, then you will know where to go and which way to go. There's so many folk who rush and get out ahead of God, thinking that they know where they're going and they end up being lost and being in worse shape than they were when they left. So here it is in verse three. I'm just walking the text this morning. I just want you to see. It says, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord, your God, and the Levitical priest carrying it, you are to move out from your position and follow it. Then you will know which way to go. Since you have never been this way before, but watch this, but keep a distance of 2,000 cubits between you and the ark and do not go near it. I read that and I watched that and I said, God, I'm, 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 I'm still dealing with this thing. You said, keep it this in 2,000 cubits. That's about a half mile behind it. He says, do not go near it. All right. He says, don't go near it, that ark. All right. He, he, he says, don't go near it. I want to show you something. I want to show you something here. Uh, God will sometimes put you close enough for you to see his work, but far enough so that you don't interfere with his work. I believe I'm going to say that again. God will put you close enough so you can see it, but far enough away from it so that you can't interfere with it. Because there's sometimes we can get up close and we begin to try and help God out. We'll try to help God out and help God do things. And God is saying, I don't need that. We knew, we found out that Uzzah uh, later on tried to help God by keeping the ark from falling off of the cart. And then we saw the results of what happened to Uzzah. Let me say this to you now. God does not need you or I to get it done because there's always somebody available to do it. So we ought to be excited about God doing it for us. Listen to what he said. God says, stay away from the ark, but watch what's going to happen. I just want you to follow it. And if we had some folk that don't mind following God, things will work. Let's look at this thing. It says, when the ark, when you see the ark, he said, go, then you know which way to go but keep a distance of 2,000 cubits from the ark. Notice the order. I want you to notice the order in which the instructions were given, right? God gave the instructions to Joshua at first. He gave instructions to the leader at first. God gave instructions to the man or the person in which he is have them leading. So he says, listen, I'm going to give my instructions to Joshua. He gives them. He says, listen what he says. He says, Joshua told the people to consecrate yourself. Watch this. And then Joshua said this in verse 7. He says, and Joshua said, and the Lord said to Joshua, the day I begin to elevate you. And then in verse 8, he tells the verse, uh, he says, tell, tell the priest who carries the ark, when you reach the edge of the water, the waters, go and stand in the river. Joshua said this to the Israelites, come and listen to the word of the Lord, your God. Watch this now. Joshua had the instructions. God spoke to Joshua. Vision flows from top down. Vision flows from top down. Anointing flows from top down. Instruction flow from top down. Then he gives instruction. Joshua gives instruction to the officers and the Levitical priests. Then he says, and we can back, we can go back up. I'm, I'm trying to give this to you so it makes sense. So he, says, he says, then Jordan, uh, verse 1. And then it says, after three days, uh, the officers went throughout the camp giving orders to the people. Joshua received the instructions. 
Then he gave it to the uh, the uh, the priests or the officers, and then they went and disseminated it to the people. Not once did I ever see in this passage where God called the people together and said, uh, come on, let me talk to all y'all. No, 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 no. God said, I'm going to talk to my person who is leading. I'm going to talk to, in this, in this case, Joshua. I'm going to talk to him, and I'm going to tell him what I want him to do. And then after he does that, he goes and tells the officers, and the officers go and tell the people. Then Joshua comes along, and then after that, they give them again. Then he gives instructions to the people. Joshua then disseminates this information to the people. Can I say something about information being given from one place to the other and the dissemination of information is this. If you get it out of order or you get the wrong person trying to disseminate information, the information that should be disseminated hmm, gets all cloudy and messed up. It gets all cloudy. It gets all jacked up. Let, let, let me pause here for a minute. And I, I got I got a couple more minutes left and I'm going to be done. Here's another thing I want you to see. Watch this now. Have you ever played this game or did this exercise where we're trying to get a message around the room? And the more people you have, the better it is. You whisper a message into someone's ear. And that person is supposed to whisper that message into the next person's ear and the next person and so on and so forth till it comes back to the original person or the one who originally sent the message out. That in this case, it's Joshua. He sent it out. What happens when the information is given to someone who is not reliable? The information changes. Things begin to alter. And by the time it gets back to the originator, that information and that particular word that they've put out or said has changed a million times. This is why it's important that you get in close proximity to your leader and allow your leader to lead you. Allow your leader to give you the instructions that you should have. This is why it's important. What you are trying to do now and what people are trying to do now, everybody has their own agenda. Folk always think that, no, what he said or what she said or what they said is not true or it didn't sound right, so let me add a little bit of mine and add a little bit. No, 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 no. You do that and you will cause people to miss out on their destiny. And if you are so gullible to follow through on that, then you will never get to your destiny. Let me help y'all understand something. Our fight is not against flesh and blood. It's against powers and principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. So these, we're not fighting the folk that are being, that's carrying the message. We're fighting the devil that's, they allowed to use them to carry the message. So here it is. So now you got to have a plan or an itinerary, which is a plan. Then you got to have instructions and those instructions is the process. Joshua tells the people, go consecrate yourself. It said, when God gives instructions about what we are to do, it is crucial to our reaching our destiny. Do not alter it. That which have been you've been given you know, or instructed to do, it will only delay, distract, or deny each of us from reaching our destiny. We all have a part to play. Listen to me now. Listen to me. We all have a part to play. Listen to what is being said and follow it to the letter. Because you say you believe in God. And you believe in the man that God or the man or woman that God has given you to lead you. If you believe in that and you believe that God is doing what God said he's going to do, then what should you do? You should follow. Come on. Can you imagine Noah building an ark in the middle of a desert or in, in a place where they've never seen rain? And it took them 120 years to do it. And the people said, this dude is out of his mind. He is crazy. It is not going to rain. But can you imagine what it took for Noah to stay steadfast? 
unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord because he knew his labor was not in vain. He worked and he worked and he worked. He kept doing what he knew how to do. He kept teaching, kept building, kept preaching, kept telling the people it's going to rain. So let's 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 do this. I got one more one more piece. Here's here's your here's your takeaways now. Here's the one. You gotta have an itinerary, or if you want to make a plan, you gotta have a plan. But that plan, you must know that plan must be God proof. And the only way you can get a God proof plan that it must come from God. God proof plan. You got a plan. Here's number two. You got to have instructions. You got to you got to follow instructions. You got to do your part. If we're going to reach our destiny, I believe God has a destiny for me. I believe God has something even greater for me. And I believe God has something even greater for ministry in for me. And I'm just willing. I'm just crazy enough to believe that whatever God tells me to do, we're going to do it. And how we're going to get it done, we're going to get it done. I didn't say we had to be fools. I didn't say we had to be foolish about what we're doing. But we are going to uh, ask God to give us great discernment so that we can reach our destiny. Here's here's point number three, and I am going to uh, shut it down after this. Amen. Here it is. You got to have a plan. You got to have instructions, which is a process. And here it is. You got to be able to implement that which God tells you to implement. You got to proceed to put into effect according to or by means of uh, definitive or definite plan and procedures. Listen to what he says. The priest who carries the ark, this is what, this is, this is what um, Joshua was saying. He said, Joshua told the people to consecrate themselves, right? For tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. He said, Joshua said to the priest, take up the ark of the covenant and pass the head on the head of the people, so they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, today I will do, I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of Israel. So they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. He said, tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant when they reach the edge of the Jordan water, go and stand in the river. Here's the implementation. They had to implement they had to proceed. They had to move. You and I alike will never reach our destiny if we sit and look, but never move. And there are many folk who have sat, looked, but they've never moved. They have never moved. And they're still talking about, I'm waiting on the Lord. And God has already given them their instructions. God has said, now it's time for you to move. And I hope <clears throat> that I got some folk here this morning who are ready to move, who are ready to go forward, ready to do what they need to do, ready to make it work, ready to stay, uh, be steadfast, put your hand to the plow, ready to do the hard work. And Paul, Paul states, Paul says, for the witch calls, I suffer these things, but nevertheless, I'm not ashamed because I know in whom I believe. And he says, I'm fully persuaded that I'm able, he's able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day. Listen, you got to be willing, willing and ready to implement that which God has given. That means we cannot implement what God has given us if we have not done our part. We cannot do that which we need to do if we have not done our part. And the destiny that waits for us is a land of promise. I'm not sure what your land of promise is, but the date that, that, that the destiny for us is a land of promise, a land filled with milk and honey, a place where you would live in houses that you did not build, you would eat from trees that you did not plant. But if you don't move, if you're not ready to move, if you still stuck in doing what you did yesterday and you and yesterday has proven to you that what you did is not effective. If you continue to do that, you will always be where you are. 
Listen to what it says. It says, God, and I'm saying this, God is able to stand. He tells the priest, he says, go stand in the middle of the river. And I want you to understand this now. The Jordan River that they were crossing was at high tide. It was at flood season. So it wasn't shallow. It was high tide. They went and stood in the middle. And the water rolled up and stopped. And the ground became dry. The children of Israel would have never crossed over the Jordan if the priest and the Levites had become rebellious and didn't do what Joshua asked them to do or what they were ordered to do. The children of Israel would have never reached their destiny if Joshua thought that he heard from the Lord and then didn't do what the Lord told him to do. I'm talking to somebody here this morning. There is a plan. There is a process, but the implementation of the plan, you must not alter that which God gives you to do. Can you imagine? The Lord told Noah, build the ark. And he gave him exact measurements of how that ark was supposed to be built. He told him exactly how to do it, when to do it, what to put on, how to do it. Can you imagine if Noah thought that, hey, maybe I just ought to alter this because Maybe that's a good that's a good thing, but it takes too long, the process too long, or this is too hard, this is too big, so I'm just going to cut some corners. That is what stops us from getting to our destinies. People cutting corners, people stopping, people not listening. Can you imagine what would have happened when the children of Israel, when God told Solomon to build his temple, that Solomon decided to build a temple like he wanted to and not like God had told him to? Can you imagine what it would have been? It would have been chaotic. So the key here is this. Follow through on what you have been ordered to do. Stop trying to alter what God has put in place. Stop trying to do that. Because it's going to delay you or distract you or stop you from reaching your destiny. So you got to implement it. It says they went and stood and... It stood on dry ground. And I want to say something to you, and I'm gone. God can stand in the midst of the rivers of your life during flood time, and he can let the ground around you dry up so that you can walk across on dry ground. Jesus stood on the bow of the ship when the disciples were in the storm, and he had made a promise to them. He said, let us go to the other side. He stood he came out of the hinder parts of the ship, stood on the bow of the ship and said, peace be still. And he said, and the wind and the rain and the storm ceased. It is important that if Jesus tells us to go to the other side, God told us to go to the other side. God told the children of Israel to go to the other side, cross the Jordan. It is important. It is vital that we follow that. Your date with destiny depends upon the plan the process, and the implementation. Or the plan, the process, and you proceeding. So I challenge you today, as we wrap this up, are you, do you want, just a question, do you want to reach your destiny? And if you do want to reach it, are you willing to do what it takes to get there? Are you willing to follow? Are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to move? We thank God for you this morning. I thank God for who you are and what you've done. But we all have a date with destiny. And I am going to fulfill my destiny. I don't want you to be left behind. Because one day, we will all have to stand before the Lord. And we have to give an account for what the Lord has told us to do. So I'm, I'm grateful for you this morning. Can we pray together? And I want you to leave with this. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. God is able to keep me and you from falling. He's able to present us. God is able to elevate us. God is able to move us from where we are to where he wants us to be. God is able to make you victorious. God is able to let you walk cross on dry ground. God is able to protect you in the midst 
of turmoil. God is able to quiet the storms of your heart. God is able to help you and get you to your destiny. But sometimes, just sometimes, it takes a little bit more and we have to be willing to put it forth. I'm done. I just want to close with this. Um, I'm often reminded of um, the story of Jonah. Jonah told the Lord, the Lord told him to go to Nineveh. He said, I'm not going. The Lord said, Jonah, you, <laughs> you're going. So John, Jonah took off and went in the opposite direction of where he was supposed to go. And God, Jonah got on the boat, went down to the seaport of Joppa, bought a ticket, got on the boat and headed to Tasha's. But a great storm ar arose. And those on the boat, that was trying to get to Tasha's. Couldn't get to Tasha's because Jonah was on the boat. Jonah was delaying it. And Jonah was holding it up. And Jonah told them, I am the problem, throw me down in the sea. They could not get where they were going. And I'm gonna teach on this. They could not get where they were going together because they had separate dates of destiny. Each one of them had a different place to go. It wasn't until they came to grips with it and understood that when they parted ways, when Jonah was thrown in this sea, storm stopped, they went on where they had to go. Fish swallows Jonah, takes him to Nineveh, spits him out on shore. Jonah ends up where he was supposed to go. But when you try to or don't listen, or you try to stop, or you try to delay your destiny. God will get you there, but at what price must you pay? It's too easy to be obedient because obedience is better than sacrifice. Let us move forward and get ready for our date with destiny. Can we pray together? Father God, we thank you so much for this morning, God. And I thank you so much for this time that I've had with your people. God, and I pray that your people are better now than they were when we started. I pray, oh God, that they understand they have a date with destiny. And that we must all follow through on the plan. Must have a plan. We must be willing to trust the process or the instructions that are given. And we must be willing to implement that or proceed. God, we have an itinerary. You've given us instructions. Now help us implement it. God, we thank you for this time that we've had with your people. I pray, oh God, that they've been blessed. I pray, God, that this word will resonate with them, God, and that they will spread this word to others. And that this word will become infectious. And that people will come running to you. They say, what must I do to be saved? We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless your heart. Listen, um, if, if this has been a blessing to you uh, this morning, um, if we've blessed you in some ways, um, I, I would love for you to, um, if you want to sow into the ministry um, and sow into what we are doing uh, here um, with, with our Lord, um please we have a cash app out there amen there it is it's on the screen go ahead and sow into that if you've been blessed if this word has blessed you and i hope it has that we all have a date with destiny um please go ahead and do that we thank god for who you are and what you're doing um and i thank god that uh we are on our way i'm not sure um what your destiny is but i know that you do have a date with destiny, amen. To God be the glory, uh, let me just pray with you. Uh, we'll leave this up on the screen there for a little bit, amen, uh, so that you can sow into it if you've been blessed by this word today, amen. We will have, uh, thank you, I saw my dear friend, Pastor Tim Canty, who popped on with us, hey, thank God for him, 
Hey, listen, we thank God for that brother right there. If you're in Columbia area and you want to check out a great church, man, go check this brother out. Pastor Tim Kent there at Northeast Christian Center. Great teacher, great brother. Awesome, incredible guy. We thank God that he uh, joined in with us this morning. Amen. But if you want to sow into us and sow into this ministry, go right ahead. We thank God for it. But let me um, say a prayer, a blessing upon you as we get ready to uh, dismiss. Amen. God, we thank you for this morning and we thank you for this time. And God, I thank you for your people. God, I pray blessings upon their lives, God. I pray blessings upon their hearts and their minds. I pray, pray blessings, God, upon their finances, and I pray blessings upon their destiny, God. God, I pray, and I thank you, God, that you have intertwined our destinies together. So, God, instead of us fighting and pulling at each other, let us bind together and move forward, God, that we can reach this land of promise that you told us about, the one that's flowing with milk and honey. Bless our time, God. Bring us back again on Tuesday at 7, God, so that we can continue to study your word and we continue to move forward and increase in number. We thank you and we glorify it. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said amen. Come on, hey, share this with somebody, tag somebody, give them uh, an opportunity to listen to it. And I pray that the blessings, this word has blessed you this morning. Amen. God bless you until I see you on Tuesday. May God keep you. May heaven smile upon you. And we are excited as we know we all have a date with destiny. Amen. To God be the glory.